My name is Julian Del Mar. I'm a painter. I paint in watercolor. I'm also a mother of two. Um, I started painting, drawing actually, since I was a kid. I've always liked to draw. And um, at first I thought it was just something that every kid goes through a drawing phase. And then time came when my classmates would uh, nominate me for poster making, doing the bulletin board. And that's, that's how I knew that um, this is something that, uh, how do you say this? <laughs> this is some, a, a talent. And then when I was 12, my parents enrolled me in a summer art class. It was uh, under Louis Quino and then, and that's how I got introduced to painting and not just drawing. So we, we studied charcoal, pastel, and then oil paints, and then eventually watercolor. And then when I started, uh, when I started using watercolor, I knew that it was going to be my favorite medium. When I was younger, when I, became, I started to become aware uh, about paintings, I would watch exhibits in the mall, and there's different mediums, charcoal, pastel, oil. There's something about watercolor that attracted me. It's vibrant, it's fresh, and uh, depending on the style, I would call it the uh, spontaneous and honest. And so that's how I got into watercolor. I took up fine arts. At, at first, it was I majored in interior design because, well, my father is an architect, and I knew he wanted me to be, if not an architect, in interior design. So I was in interior design for two, three years, and then I still wanted to pursue painting, so I shifted to painting. So eventually, I graduated um, in uh, from fine arts, major in painting. So I spent. Um, a lot of years in fine arts. I'm drawn to urban subjects like this one. Buildings, people, especially the marketplaces like Carbon. It's one of my, uh, downtown Cebu is one of my favorite places to um, find inspiration. And so I would I wouldn't look at a scene and then think immediately, how would I turn this into a painting? I like to take in the environment, how I feel about it. And so when I'm at my, uh, at my studio and painting, I try to recall what the place made me feel instead of just copying. So as you can see, my, uh, the reference photo is what we call it. It doesn't have to be perfect and it's even uh, very different from the final it's because it's just a reference. It's about, well, in the, the final product has to convey the, the atmosphere. So that's, that's my process. I also like seascapes, beaches, um, I also like to paint people. I also like to paint sometimes portraits, portraits of my family, friends, and a few, sometimes flowers. So the process, it would take around one and a half hours for this size of painting. But this one, which I made yesterday, it's called a tonal value study. Um, if you count this as part of the process, then it would take longer. It's, uh, there's a lot of preparation going on behind uh, before you do a painting. So uh, a tonal value study is, um, it shows you the darkness or the lightness of, a, of an object, of a color. 
you know, the light and the shade, it will make it even more obvious where the light is coming from. Because if you just look at the photo, it's kind of flat. So that's what we do in painting. We exaggerate things. Painting is quite broad. I have friends who are portrait painters, so they get clients, they get commissions. And that would be more practical. I think kana may makabuhig familia. But may I just paint what I like? So um, it's hard. You have to really promote yourself. You have to keep on practicing. So like, like for me, I, I upload in online galleries, so I get sales sometimes online. Since the pandemic, it has really affected not just the selling, but, uh, but the art itself. Because we're not able to go out and find inspiration. And it's really, it's really important to really go out there and find, your, find the subjects that you like. So after the pandemic, it's really, it's really, hard, it's really hard to find the, the motivation, to be honest. But that's just one of the challenges. With our technology today, I can look at um, Google Street View. It's like I also have um, uh, friends and we share some of our work with each other. So that's how I cope. And now, um, since it's, I think it's the second <laughs> lockdown, actually right now I wish I could go out some more. <laughs> Got some more and did what I used to do, which is just walk around and get lost and find subjects. So that's one of the challenges. Just paint, practice, paint and paint and paint, and then compare my works to my past works from a year ago, two years ago. It's surprising to see how. Two years ago, I thought it was good. <laughs> Two years later, you'd think it's bad. <laughs> so, and also, um, just watching other artists paint, learning from them. So that's how I try to keep on growing. Okay, my favorite watercolor painters um, are David Taylor, John Yardley, and Andy Evenson. <laughs> they're my, they're, their style, I really like their style. If there are artists that, whose style I would like my style to be, it's their style, very um, spontaneous, fast and quick, very um, confident strokes. Art is essential to me. I don't know to other people, but it is essential to me. I can't imagine my life without art. <laughs> it's, it's something, I think it's something that I'm born with. So I, I can't tell everyone that it's essential. It's, I can't force it that it's essential to us. It's essential, essential to the world, although I know it is. But um, it's just something that uh, I grew up with. and. I can't imagine my life without art. It makes me express. I think it's like poetry, but in picture form. I like, I really, I feel happy if I can make something and I, um, it reminds me of, of an experience. Because that's what I like to paint, an experience. I, like I mentioned, I don't just copy. So um, if I get um, feedback, I like technical feedbacks, but the best feedbacks I get is when people tell me, oh, this reminds me of this place, this reminds me of when I went to this one, like that. My advice to aspiring artists, just experiment and discover what you like. You don't have to, you don't have to um, know right away what your direction will be, it will come eventually. Like me, I, 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 I did many other mediums, 
but it took me years to really know which style and which direction I would go. So don't be discouraged. Just keep, uh, just keep doing what sets your heart on fire. My advice to parents who feel their children might have the talent is to just give them time and opportunity to discover their talents and skills. Um, actually, when I was in school, my mom would, would scold me because I wouldn't do my homework or study for exams because I wanted to just draw. So just let them and give them opportunities like the um, enrolling them in lessons if they like. To art collectors, uh, there is a lot of talent in Filipino artists and if you just discover them, I think it would really bring a lot of value to your collection. <laughs> Sometimes it's um, it's unexpected where you can find uh, good artists. So don't just uh, stick to exhibits in malls. There are so many other artists that you might discover out there. <laughs>